Well, good morning and welcome to our live video here at Concordia Technology Solutions. My name is Peter Frank. I'm the Senior Manager of Marketing Technology here and I am happy to uh, talk to you once again about leveraging technology in your ministry. Today we're going to talk about continuing education in the church and this means a number of different things. And my guest today, Andrew Osborne, wrote a blog post for us on this topic that is on the CTS blog. I encourage you to take a look at that. It'll go through some of the things that we're talking about today, and any of the links that we might reference are available there for you to look at. So, um, Andrew is um, the Director of Worship Arts at Cornerstone Lutheran Church in Fishers, Indiana, um, and has been a frequent uh, blogger for us and contributor and used to be on our team here. So, Andrew, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. How are you guys? Doing all right. We're hoping that our technology works this time because it's been cutting out quite a <laughs> bit. So I know you've dealt with that last time you were here. So yeah. Yep. Well, thanks for writing this blog post. And I think it's um, it's interesting that you wrote on this topic because um, when we first met, however many years ago it was now, um, your ability and desire to learn and find new ways to learn and improve your skill set is one of the key things that interested me and in how I'm bringing you on our team here because you are never satisfied with where your skill sets are, um, you know, focusing on one area but always looking to expand. And so I think it's very appropriate that you wrote on this topic today. So thanks for Thank sharing you. this. And tell us a little bit about your background and kind of um, what has led you to uh, having this active desire to learn based on the roles that you've had in the church. Sure. Well, I, uh, I've always been a curious person and I've never really been like particularly great at anything. Um, so I, I really enjoy trying new things and uh, learning new things. So uh, when I was doing my undergrad, I was doing uh, like youth ministry kind of classes. Uh, but I also had an interest in uh, videography. I had a friend who had a camera and we would do projects together. Um, and so I, I got really interested in that and took some classes in videography just to kind of get my toes wet in that. Uh, but then I still had the desire to go into church work of some kind. So I finished off a religious studies degree, um, but I, I knew I still wanted to use the film also. And I was interested in music. And uh, so there's just all these different interests that I, uh, I my my career so far has been a mix of those different things that I've been interested in. So, yep, that's awesome. And um, well, and that's really where we start today with the, the blog post that you wrote. You start with the need for training in the church and for church workers to be able to expand their skills. Tell us what makes it unique about um, being in church work that requires the need for training. What are some of the challenges that church workers face or churches face that require this additional skill sets from somebody? Yeah, well, churches obviously have lots of needs for uh, different skill sets. And obviously you can, you can do okay with just a pastor, um, but if you want to increase your reach into different areas, uh, like taking your ministry online so that people uh, in your community or outside of your community can see what's going on or learn from you, um, you need someone who knows how to do that kind of stuff. If you want to get into youth ministry, um, it's better to have someone who understands youth who also has that theological background. Because um, not, I know this is a shocker, but not every pastor is great with youth. Um, and that's okay. We all have different skill sets. Right. Um, so it's, it's good to have different uh, varieties of skills on your staff at a church or any organization, really. So in order to expand ministry into different areas, you need to have these skill sets. Um, and you mentioned one of the ways is to hire, but hiring skill sets is kind of tough in the church with limited budgets. So would you see training as kind of the first step or the last resort when a church needs these skill sets um, versus the other options that are available? Or is it somewhere in between? Well, as good Lutherans, we know it's both. Um, <laughs> you, you can hire people to do those things, but like you said, a lot of churches don't have the funds to go out and just hire a videographer. Um, but they have lots of people on staff who are already eager to learn and expand their knowledge. Um, so a, a lot of the times it just falls on the church to provide that training to those people. And there's lots of avenues for that training, which is kind of what my blog post gets into is finding those avenues and um, knowing how, what to give to your people uh, to help train them. 
Good. Well, let's dig into those different areas. Um, you mentioned three types of training that might be necessary in continuing that in the church. And the first one is theological training. So um, let me ask you this, and I say this kind of tongue in cheek, um, but doesn't the, uh, the Concordia University system or the seminaries teach church workers everything that they need to know about theology? And why would you need to go elsewhere to learn theology if you've already had that education? Obviously, well, yeah, we, we know that our, our Concordias do everything. Um, so <laughs> them aside, but really, uh, I, I think uh, undergrad especially, and probably also seminary, even though I haven't been there, um, you really are learning how to learn. Um, so yes, you're getting filled with lots of knowledge, but it's also teaching you how to go out and gain more knowledge because you only have a certain amount of years to be there and you can only afford a certain amount of years to be there for most of us. Um, so you're only going to be able to retain so much. Um, but all the people that I know who are, in my opinion, the smartest people I know are the people that are continually learning new things and telling you, I don't know, I, I got to go look that up. And um, they're the people with notes in all of their books and they're just constantly trying to absorb more because you can only learn so much in your undergrad. Uh, so I think you're forced to keep learning throughout your lifetime. I think that's absolutely right. I forget what the exact quote or who it was that said it, but something along the lines of the more you learn, the more you learn what you don't already know. And I know that in my professional career, I've experienced that. That <laughs> you, know, you get really good at something when you know how little you know about it and how much more there is to learn. So, and yeah, God's word is so rich and there's so many um, different proper applications that you have to just continue to learn that. So what are some of your recommendations for church workers or even people who are not church workers but are working in the church um, to gain this additional theological training? Well, I think every denomination probably has resources that they could find, especially on their seminary websites. But uh, being a Missouri Synod Lutheran, uh, our sources, we have two different seminaries that you can go to their websites and find lots of information. Uh, both our Fort Wayne and our St. Louis websites have tons of free resources. Uh, you can observe classes and learn directly from our seminary professors. Um, so. I, when I lived in St. Louis, I, I had one of the professors teaching Bible study at my church, so I got a taste of his teaching, and I really enjoyed it. Um, and then I found a class of his. His name is Joel Bierman. Uh, he's a professor in St. Louis, and he taught a whole systematics class, and they had it available on their website for free for anyone to uh, watch. And uh, just learning from those guys who are at the peak of uh, <laughs> what we understand as the knowledge for our church, learning directly from them is pretty awesome. So there's one source you can go to, but there's lots of blogs out there and um, podcasts and things like that. So it's just searching around. Um, you can ask on different forums and Facebook groups and lots of people have opinions on where to find the best uh, resources. Yeah, and I think that's the key thing is that um, there are so many out there that all you have to do is look. There's not one source. Um, but you're, you're right, seminary professors, like um, having sat in on some of those classes before on visit days and stuff, just hearing them, it's just at a, such a different level than what you yeah. might get elsewhere. And um, it's one of the reasons why so many of them publish with us because they're so good at what they right. do. Great. Well, let's move into the next one, which might seem a little bit out of place as we talk about the church, um, but it's management training. And we all know that the church is not a business. Um, you know, we may operate like a business in many different ways, but ultimately our goals are different. You know, our bottom line is about sharing the gospel, not about making money. Um, but tell us why a church worker might um, benefit from having additional management training. Um, outside of the t traditional you know, church leadership kind of things, but management training in general. Yeah, well, I can tell you, at least from my experience, uh, working with youth ministry and now in uh, music ministry and any, anything you do, really, um, you're going to be dealing with people and you're going to be dealing with finances and you're going to be dealing with time management. Um, so just having that knowledge um, that you can gain a lot of times from the secular world on how to manage those things well uh, is really uh, can really en enhance what you're doing in ministry. Uh, when I was working as a, a youth director, I wasn't always great at working with volunteers and uh, making sure people feel encouraged and things like that. Um, so I've I found some books that I've read on that topic. Um, and in the blog post, I, I referenced um, that I 
I'm not great at sitting down and reading a big long book, especially um, on things like management. So I found uh, audiobooks that do the job just as well, and I really enjoy looking at those and reading those. You know, I'm kind of the same way. For me to sit down and read a book and stay awake has been quite tough. Um, with a couple of little kids at home, which I know you have three of them of your own, it can be tiring and you can't find that time. Um, but audiobooks has been a great thing for me. And what I found is that it, when I listen to audiobooks, and, and it's almost exclusively business books or about management, productivity, this kind of thing, um, being able to listen to this while I go for a walk and actually being able to focus on it and kind of digest it mentally um, has been a great benefit for me. So when you put that in there, I was like, yeah, I can relate with that. That's what I've been doing a lot of too. So um, good. Any other thoughts or any specific ones you'd like to recommend? Uh, oh, shoot. There were a couple that I had in the blog post. So I, I don't know if I could remember the names of them, but um, let's see. Uh, seven Covey, Habits. What is, yeah. Seven yeah. Habits of Highly Effective People. I think, yeah. That's yeah. Just knowing how to work with people, whatever your role is in the church or even in an organization, knowing how to relate to people um, and deal with them and deal with their quirks and help them understand your quirks, it's going to be helpful for you. Good. All right, well, let's go to the third one, which is technology training. We talked about this a little bit already, and really this is why we do these videos, is that it's all about providing technology training for the church. But let's go back to that need again. Um, can you reiterate why a church worker whose primary goal is sharing the gospel uh, might need to advance their skills in technology, even if it's not their primary job responsibility? Yeah, well, I think it's, as our, our world progresses, in its use of technology. Um, the church can also kind of use that technology to promote the gospel even, um, and finding new ways and new creative ways to share our message, um, because we have the most important message in the world, and finding new ways to get it to new people is kind of what we're called to do. Um, so for me, I've always been interested in technology and finding new ways to use it, and uh, like I said, videography and things like that. Um, so I've always been looking for uh, new ways to learn it because like I said I'm not great at sitting down reading a textbook or things like that um, but I found that there's tons of really good resources out there for um, learning technology uh, YouTube for instance you can go on there and type anything you're interested in and there's gonna be tons of tutorials on it um, so that's a lot of where I do my learning when it comes to technology is just finding a good YouTube uh, channel that does tutorials um, the problem with YouTube, however, is that you don't really know what you're getting or who the person is or the quality of the video. Um, so there are other alternatives out there, but a lot of times they cost money, whereas YouTube is free, obviously. Uh, my favorite one, however, is lynda.com. Um, it's actually owned by LinkedIn. Uh, so I think they may be transitioning a lot of their videos to the LinkedIn platform, uh, but you can still find all of the, the tutorials there. Um, and I'm actually going through one right now um, on how to make iOS apps just because it's something that interests oh, wow. me. That's um, awesome. So you, you can find really any kind of technology that you're interested in, find a, a really good solid tutorial that takes you through the whole process on lynda.com. You know, that was the tool I used to learn how to do Adobe InDesign, uh, which is, for those of you who are not familiar, it's kind of like Publisher, but much better. And um, it can be a little bit of a challenge, but yeah, lynda.com videos just kind of walk you through step by step. Um, I think that's great. Any other um, suggested ways of learning technology before we wrap up today? Or, or actually, I'll throw that. Anything else that you'd like to mention about just learning in general? Uh, not in particular. Um, the, the one thing that I had in the blog post that I forgot to mention was when you're looking for audiobooks, um, there are ways you can pay for them, obviously, by going to like Amazon or Audible and purchasing them there. But a lot of times you have to pay for a subscription and it, it gets a little pricey. Um, but most of us live near a public library. Uh, and most public libraries, you can actually check out audiobooks onto your phone without even going to the the library itself using an app called Libby, L-I-B-B-Y. Um, so that's a, a resource that I use a lot. I've been reading books on that when I'm running especially and things like that. Um, so yeah, that's that's one. Just, just keep learning. There's lots of stuff out there. 
That's awesome. Well, Andrew, thanks so much for joining us today, and um, thanks for sharing your insight on how to learn. We're going to continue down this path of, of learning and training in the church next week when we talk with uh, Bill Johnson from the Concordia Theological Seminary, like you mentioned before, one of our, our um, seminaries, the one in Fort Wayne. And he's the director of educational, um, I think, educational technology there. And um, we're going to talk about specifically in the church and fully utilizing software solutions that are purchased often at a hefty fee for the congregation um, and how to best utilize them by ensuring that training is properly put in place at the beginning and throughout the, the life cycle of using the software. So we'll continue down this path but get kind of a little bit more narrow focused specifically on software in the church. So I invite you to join us next week and uh, in the meantime if you've got any questions for Andrew go ahead and put them in the chat. We'll be following up uh, over the course of the next week. So thank you very much much for joining us and have a great rest of the day.